Hi guys, Sandy here. In this video today, we're gonna to talk about something that we see a lot at the recreational level and often players don't really know why they're doing this, and that is jumping with the bandeja. Now, there's something that we see a lot at the World Paddle Tour level, and there's a specific reason why those guys do that, and also why you shouldn't do that unnecessarily. So in this video, we're gonna discuss when are good times to do it, and also the technique on how you should be doing it. So to begin with, we're gonna talk about the reasons for doing the jump in the first place. Now, you would use the jump in order to get your body behind the ball and therefore your contact in front. And we've spoken before on previous videos about the bandeja, the importance of the contact in front and also to the side of the body. Now, this is something that's really important. Another reason that you would jump is because when you're jumping backwards, it means that you can land either with one foot or with both feet and then able to push yourself back to that net position, which is another important part of the bandeja is recovering that net position after the shot. If you want to improve your paddle please click the subscribe button that way it makes sure that you'll get our weekly videos on how to improve your game. So when we talk about when to use this, we use this on more difficult lobs, the lobs that go deeper in the court that we don't have time to get back with a stable base and hit our bandeja like this. We have to run back and our last resort is to jump, hit that bandeja and recover. And this is the reason we don't use this on balls that are easier because we have time to get underneath the ball, make a stable base with the feet and then hit your bandeja. And therefore it's a lot easier to get that contact in the right place. So when it comes to the technique, you start from the ready position. As soon as you see your opponents hit the lob, you immediately start preparing for an overhead. And as soon as you see it's deep, that's when you start moving fast back, either with a crossover step, or you can go side step, whichever is fastest for you in that situation. Also depends a little bit where the ball is. You move back as fast as you can, two or three good steps, and then you take off with your back leg. So you're jumping up with your back leg, and you jump in a kind of, diagonal position like this. There's no point jumping up vertically because that's not helping you contact the ball in front. It's not bringing your body weight behind. You could actually just stand there and wait for the ball to drop. So you actually end up jumping backwards to try and contact that ball in front. Your body weight goes back and during your swing, you want to try and contact that ball at the top of your jump if possible. And when you land, you land with two feet or maybe one just before the other and then you push yourself back towards the court. When we talk about common errors for this shot, probably the biggest common error is players doing it when they don't need to do it. There's a few difficulties with this shot. It's quite an advanced technique. And often players are jumping into this position when they don't need to, and therefore it's difficult to contact that ball at the right height. They end up jumping up and then either contacting low or their arm is too outstretched, or they mistime their jump and they end up jumping and falling on the way down trying to contact. My advice would be if you can get under the ball without jumping and you can hit with a stable base, that is really what you want to try and do. Even at a good level, this is a really difficult shot to execute and it requires a lot of practice. But the key is knowing when you should be using it. If it's a short ball and you don't need to jump, then don't jump. But also at the same time, if it's a really deep ball, it might be better for you to allow that ball to bounce and play it after the back glass. The bandeja technique is already quite difficult on its own. And we have a full overheads course where we go through all of the bandeja technique and the other overheads where you should be hitting, the speed you should be hitting, everything like that. I'll put the link down in the description below, but that would be a good place to start if you want to improve that technique. 